let's say you've got to evaluate an integral like this one using the definition of the integral. Well, we're going to need a couple of tools. We're going to need the definition of the integral and some summation formulas, and let's get a graph as well. So on my graph, I'm going to go ahead and draw in where I want that area. So I'm looking for this area right here, and it's going to be all of this space. In order to fill that space up, I'm going to need to use infinitely many rectangles. Instead of worrying about all of these rectangles, the formula allows me to focus on one sample rectangle, and that's the ith rectangle. The width of this rectangle and all of the rectangles is delta x, and delta x is going to be the entire length of the interval divided into n rectangles. So in general, that's b minus a divided by n. For our particular example, that's going to be the limits of integration 4 and 1, so 4 minus 1 divided by n, or 3 divided by n. We also have a height, and that height is going to be the function value f of x sub i. And we're going to calculate that function value using x plus 2, but we need to figure out what x sub i is. This formula uses right-hand rectangles. So x sub i star, star just for the sample rectangle, is going to be at the start place plus i delta x's. So for our example, my start is at 1, so that's going to be 1 plus i times delta x. So that's going to be i times 3 over n, or we can say that x sub i star is equal to 1 plus 3 i over n. We now have everything that we need to evaluate this integral using the definition. So our integral from 1 to 4 of x plus 2 dx is equal to, we're going to use infinitely many rectangles, but we're not going to worry about that until the very last step. So n goes to infinity, and then I've got my summation. So i goes from 1 to n, these are each of my rectangles f of x sub i, well f of x is my function, so this is going to be x sub i star plus 2, and then my delta x, and delta x is 3 over n. I've got one more thing to replace in this formula, and that's my x sub i star. I want to replace that for 1 plus 3i over n, which applies to my example. So our formula looks like this. I've got the limit as n goes to infinity. Summation i goes from 1 to n. Let's go ahead and replace that x sub i star with 1 plus 3i over n, and then I've got that plus 2. And then on the outside, we had 3 over n. Now, my summation applies to anything with an i or a constant. That is not the case with this 3 over n. I'm going to go ahead and bring that out in front, and that's going to simplify my life quite a bit. So now we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of, I'm going to bring that 3 over n out in front, and that's going to leave me with my summation. I'll put it in blue. i goes from 1 to n. I can go ahead and add the 1 and the 2 together, so I get 3 plus 3i over n. Now I want to apply some of these formulas that I've got up here. I want the um, sum of 3, and I want the sum of 3i over n. I'm going to go ahead and break that summation apart so that you can see how it looks. I still have the limit out in front, so limit n goes to infinity, 3 over n, and here comes my summation. I'm going to apply the summation to 3, 1 to n of 3. That's going to be 3 plus 3 plus 3, and there are n of those. So that's going to become 3n plus the summation i goes from 1 to n of 3i over n. Well, remember how we brought that 3n out in front up above that I've got circled there in yellow? I could do the very same thing with this 3 over n here. So that's going to be plus 3 over n, and I'm going to apply the summation formula for i. My summation formula for i, moving this up here, is going to get me to, so this is equal to... 
the limit, n goes to infinity. I still have the three over n out in front. So let's continue to write what we're simplifying here in blue. I've got the three over n, that's perfect, plus three over n. I'm gonna go ahead and write that formula, n, n plus one, all divided by two to replace the sum of i. So I've got an n here that I can cancel and I'm just about ready to take that limit. Let's clean up what we've got there in blue. So now working through some algebra, n goes to infinity. I'm gonna leave the three over n out here. I've got a three n here. Let's go ahead and multiply this three into the n plus one. So that's gonna give me three times n, that's divided by two and then three times my one, which is also divided by two, three over two. Now I am ready to bring the three over n into the parentheses, into what I've got in blue there. Just about ready to apply that limit. So limit as n goes to infinity, I've got three over n times my three n plus three over n times the next one. So three over n times, 3n over 2 plus the last one, 3 over n times 3 over 2. I'm going to simplify what I can, limit as n goes to infinity, and then the limit is going to be super easy to apply. I can cancel some n's here and I get 9. In the second quantity, I get n's that cancel again and I get 9 over 2, so plus 9 over 2. And in the last one, all I can do is multiply through and I get a 9 over 2n. Let's go ahead and apply that limit. So as I apply the limit, as n goes to infinity, 9 does not depend on n, 9 over 2 does not depend on n, but 9 over 2n does. So 9 over 2 times infinity, that goes to 0, and I end up with 9 9 plus 9 over 2, you can call that 4.5, and I end up with 13.5. Take a look at my next video. It's going to evaluate an integral again with a definition, but it's going to evaluate an x squared as well. Thanks so much for watching.